Coming up on the newscast, MH17 victims' families head to Europe in search of the truth. Fremantle Council delighted with the boundary change, while the Coburn District cries foul. And is Clyde Palmer the real power broker in Australian politics? This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Carly Samata. Good evening. Despite the confronting news footage, the political blame game and the uncompromising actions from the rebels, the Tachinsky family still holds a glimmer of hope that their daughter Fatima may still be alive. This week, their parents travelled to the MH17 crash site in Ukraine to seek the truth. Kirov Taplin reports. The Jasinskis, whose 24-year-old daughter, Fatima, was on flight MH17, believes there is still hope that she could be alive. The parents have flown over to Amsterdam to get confirmation on whether her body has been discovered. Longtime friend of the Jasinskis and foreign affairs commentator Howard Sattler doesn't believe the victims' families were treated with respect by the rebels. None of the families have been treated with any respect by the East Europeans or the, or the Russian separatists at all. They've been an absolute disgrace. And Vladimir Putin deserves a bit of uh, criticism for that too because he took many days to ask them to secure the scene. Last week, Fatima's mother, Angela Jasinski, described her daughter as the shining peacemaker and a brilliant aerospace engineer scientist. I told her that I'm really proud and uh, that it's a great achievement to be an aerospace engineer. It's, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, so, it's such an effort to achieve this. Kier Taplin, WM News. To local news. The City of Coburn continues to cry foul after the Local Government Advisory Board released the Council Merge Plan, showing little change to the new boundaries. But the neighbouring council argued that Coburn got 95% of what it wanted. After months of waiting, the Local Government Advisory Board has released its Council Border recommendations for public opinion. There were no major changes to the new Council Boundaries plans for Perth's southern suburbs, which frustrated Coburn Mayor Logan Howlett. With the proposed amalgamation uh, that the board is going to recommend to the minister, it puts the new local government of Coburn and Quinana at a significant disadvantage financially. Under the new plan, the northern parts of the city will be given to Melville and Fremantle councils. Coburn argued that future residents in southern parts of the city will have to pay higher rates with less council services in return. But Fremantle Mayor has dismissed the argument and reinstated his council is financially sustainable. I think uh, any examination of the evidence would show that Fremantle is a highly rated council in terms of sustainability, in fact um, the highest rated council um, in, the, in, in that area. Um, we have more savings than, um, than, than, than many councils and, uh, and very limited amounts of debt. The new council border plan is available for public comment for the next three weeks. Darren McElane, WAMN News. It seems that some Australians were relieved that the carbon tax was finally axed. But in the past two weeks, it has been suggested that Clive Palmer is the real power broker rather than the coalition. I was joined by Liberal Senator Chris Back to discuss this topic. Chris Back, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Great to be here. The carbon tax was finally repealed. Was there a sense of relief in the Liberal Party room? There was. Uh, we went to the last election. We went to the 2010 election saying we'd repeal the carbon tax. When it was repealed, we were pleased, but of course it's just on with the business of governing the country. The tax repeal bill was rejected on the first week. It seems the Palmer United Party embarrassed your party. Not at all. The Palmer Party was very new to the Senate. What they did not understand was that you can't bring money bills or money amendments into the Senate. But it all boils back down to one thing. Is it true that Clive Palmer is more powerful than the Prime Minister because he can veto whatever he wants? No, it's not true. Mr Palmer is one member of Parliament. Uh, there are three Palmer United Senators. They've been there two weeks. It's been a huge learning curve for them, as it has been for all of the crossbench Senators. You see, under the Constitution, the Senate was always seen to be and set up to be a house of review. What we're seeing, because no one party dominates the Senate, it is doing exactly as its original founding fathers intended. The opposition said the federal government is serving Mr Palmer like a butler. Do you agree with that? When you say the government is pandering to the coalition, you need only look uh, on Thursday of last week when during question time, Clive Palmer came into the back of the Senate chamber, crooked his finger 
towards the Labour leader of the opposition in the Senate, Penny Wong, who rushed out in the middle of question time, rushed out to see Mr Palmer. So who is the puppet in this? I would say Senator Wong was very embarrassed when she came back to raucous laughter from the coalition on that occasion. Chris Back, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Building a high-rise block of apartments in just 10 days. It might sound too good to be true, but that's exactly what construction workers have achieved this week. The six-storey modular apartment complex in Coburn was put together like Lego blocks, erecting 15 units each day. The housing minister hopes the new construction method will fast-track the delivery of affordable housing to the market. It's a lot quicker. These building time is, is halved. The construction costs are reduced by 10 to 12 per cent. And so the, what we're trying to achieve is, a, is a, another quality product, but at a cheaper price. The thermal performance of the building is actually exceptional. Um, it's 30 per cent more thermally efficient than a conventional building. And so that means that you'll need to turn your air conditioning on less often and your heating on less often as well. The Perth CBD is gearing up to be a smarter place to live, work and play after a team of pro bono IBM experts arrived to participate the Smarter Cities Challenge. Perth was one of the 16 cities in the world to receive an award from IBM. The experts will explore, research and collect data by interviewing stakeholders. They will work to give insight to the council into how to provide better services. The volunteering engagement is worth $500,000. We've got expert, experts from you know six international cities. They come with a vast amount of experience and they're coming and looking at Perth with fresh eyes. This can only help us get into a much better position with the experience they bring and what they're observing here. WA Premier Colin Barnett made a surprise announcement that the Giants from Royal Deluxe will perform in Perth during next year's Anzac Day commemorations. The 11 metre deep sea diver and the 6 metre little girl will walk the streets of Perth for three days. The performance is set to become WA's biggest public arts event to commemorate the soldiers who fought in Gallipoli almost 100 years ago. To science news. Last month I reported on the new species discovered in the Bush Blitz program. I'm happy to report today the project is being stepped up in hopes of discovering even more of Australia's hidden species. It's amazing, isn't it, Carly? The Australian Government and BHB Billiton's Sustainable Communities have each contributed $6 million to extend the project to 2017. Senator Simon Birmingham said the funding will send teams to blitz dozens more remote areas throughout Australia, uncovering and discovering species that are completely new to science. IVEC has taken home a white award for their innovative project Katami. Blake Danielsark reports. The Katami project is revolutionising marine science by providing researchers with the tools for analysis of their aquatic images. The project includes a website that acts as a central hub for scientists to upload and analyse their underwater pictures and a standardised classification system that helps researchers accurately name and compare species in a consistent way. The technology is improving the efficiency of data organisation and allowing collaboration between scientists. The project has also been nominated for the National Eye Awards in August. Blake Denelzark, WAMN News. A revolutionary disease-fighting condom has been given the green light for sale in Australia. The condom features a unique gel called VivaGel that attacks viruses that cause sexually transmitted infections such as HIV and herpes. Levagel was developed by Australian biotech Stafarma, who announced on Monday that Australia's Therapeutic Goods Administration had approved the use of the gel on condoms, allowing them to go on sale in a matter of months. Stafarma believes that the approval by Australian authorities should support its applications to other regulators overseas. And that's how Perth looks this week. You can read these stories and more on our website. Thanks for joining us. Daniel Staniscoff will be back next Sunday. Good night.